Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. This time when I came home, I got these packages in my mail. And to stop all the discussions about my fingers, I decided to wear some hand gloves from now on. These are RFM22B 433 MHz transmitters which go into the test for these kind of devices in a future video. Again RF modules for the test. These are also 400 and 33 megahertz devices including a very small antenna wow very big knobs with a switch and an LED so let's have a quick look at this huge button switch. Here is the, the switch and unfortunately it is not as it's written an LED switch. There is just no lamp in it. So what I did is I took a, quite a strong I don't know one watt or something LED and soldered some wire to, to it. So I can put it in here instead of a normal lamp and if I press it is quite bright. This is not the final thing but I think it sh should be possible to just uh, glue it in with a little bit hot glue, then I don't need to have a conventional lamp. And now this huge lamp button switch works even with illumination. Quite impressive. I like it. A big one. from Broadlink this came from Banggood I think and it is a kit with several remote controlled devices I will probably make a video about that uh, later on. Small one. These are 10 very small RF transmitters. They can be broken into parts. So the size in reality is only this size, 433 megahertz. Next one. Cables. They should be silicon wires. They are really quite flexible. They are much more flexible than the normal wires I use. About similar size but much more flexible. 
as I said the material is quite flexible now let's test if uh, it is ordinary material or not if I take normal plastic then I heat it up to about 350 degrees centigrade and you see it is completely melted so this material does not resist 350 degrees uh, centigrade which is the temperature I use to um, to solder now let's try the new purchase nothing so this material really resists the 350 degrees so it is at least not cheap plastic it is well possible that this is silicon so thumbs up for this material next one again transceivers this time with an SMA connector this will be a huge comparison probably not only one video ah, they are even antennas nice small antennas Next one. This is a clock, but the interesting thing I'm really interested in is this one here. This is a projector for numbers and I want to try to use this for my own projects. I probably will throw away the rest. This one is able to project numbers to a wall and I am interested in this one here. Next one. This is a 433 megahertz remote control. So I open the remote control. And we see it has a 12 volt battery. Never seen such a battery. But it's interesting. It is still completely full. The receiver is in this box with the antenna here and the connection. And I already connected it to 12 volt. There is a small button here and to learn which of the four buttons will actuate the relay here we have to program with this button. Next one. Uh -huh. Another interesting thing I read about that and uh, one of my viewers also uh, had some questions about this technology. These are supercapacitors. They have 10 farad of capacity which is huge. We usually have microfarads or nanofarads but this one has 10 farads should be like a battery like a very um, small battery but I just want to um, play around with this technology it only supports 2.7 volts so so in order to check this supercapacitor I just put it into my normal test unit and press test what does it measure? Long time nothing.
it thinks that this is a battery with a voltage of 500 millivolts, 546 millivolt. So these kind of capacitors cannot be tested or measured with these devices here. We have to find a different possibility. Just to test this supercapacitor, I have a 5 ohm resistor here which shortcuts this supercapacitor. I measure the voltage and the time. If I load it to 2.7 volt and discharge it with 5, 5 ohms, it should have, after 20 seconds, it should have 1.8 volt and after 40 seconds, it should have 1.2 volt. If it is 10 farad. So let's try. Twenty seconds, one point nine. Forty seconds, one point four. So the capacity is okay. It is even more than expected. Now one question is whether these supercapacitors can be used as batteries. This is why I have here my supercapacitor. I have here a small, a very small step up converter which uh, converts to 3.3 volt. And here I have an LED as a load, just a small LED. And I measure the voltage across this LED. Now I connect it also. A voltmeter to show you the voltage across the supercapacitor. The LED is burning and the supercapacitor for the moment is charged by my bench power supply. Now I start by disconnecting the bench power supply and I start the timer on my iPhone. And you see immediately the voltage starts to drop. Oh, here it is still constant and the LED are still burning. After one minute there is still 3.3 volt but the super capacitor discharged uh, already a little bit to 2.2 volt. This little step up converter is really very powerful with a voltage of 0.1 volt it still produces 2.6 volt output and can still light up the LED. And it's now 7 minutes. Incredible with this little voltage, still 2.5 voltage output and the LED is still light up. So I do not know what I have to admire more, the supercapacitor or this little small step up converter here. Of course the LED now do, does not draw a lot of uh, current anymore because it's switched off. So we got now to the threshold voltage. So it's about nine minutes of current in this supercapacitor. Now the question can be answered whether this small rechargeable battery or the supercapacitor is the winner. This LED would last forever on this small LIR2450 we used in our ex experiments with deep sleep and it has, it has about the same size. So uh, a supercapacitor is definitely in this area not a replacement for a chemical rechargeable battery. Next one. This is something to play around for fun. These are aircraft switches as they are called. I just thought if I do something very important, maybe the red one here. So assemble they look like that. 
First you have to open this one that you can switch on. And if you close, it, switch, it switches off again. I thought this is a nice thing. I have no clue how to use it or where to use it.